Joining us right now is Sally Pipes, who's the president and chief executive officer of the Pacific Research Institute in uh, San Francisco. Her latest book is The Top Ten Myths of American Health Care. Sally, thank you for being with us. Well, thank you, Fred, for having me on again. It's, uh, it's uh, always very good to have you. And I just want to ask you this. Um, there is so many things flying around now about what's in this bill or not in this bill and the effect it'll have and, and, and all of that. I, I suspect that the American people are just overwhelmed by all of these, all of these details. Clearly, we're still discovering uh, things that, you know, having to do with gun rights and, 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 and things of that nature that nobody knew was in the bill and, and, and all of that. But just as an overview, uh, I think that there are two things that are on Americans' minds I wish you'd address. Number one, is this going to be defi deficit neutral, as the president claims? And number two, how is this going to affect the average person? in terms of the of the uh, their premiums and in terms of the kind of care they're going to get. Could you address those for us? Right. Well, of course, you know, the president has said, and he on September 9th gave his 29th speech on health care reform, where he said he wanted a $900 billion health care plan over 10 years, which would be deficit neutral. Fred, I don't think there is any way that, that the, the, the Senate bill or the House bill will be deficit neutral. We are all going to face increased taxes, not just people earning over $250,000 a year. The costs are going to be out of control. It won't be $1.055 trillion. I bet the cost of this, if it comes through with a public option, the mandates, all the taxes, this is going to cost probably 2 to $3 trillion because no government program, as you know, ever costs what politicians predict it will cost. And Medicare is a great example of that. Medicare, as I recall, Sally, uh, after 25 years, turned out to be nine times more expensive than what they projected that it would be at 25 years. Uh, so that's, you're, you're right, you're a classic example of that. And uh, I don't know if you saw David Broder's column in the Washington Post yesterday, but uh, he, he was talking that, about the Quinnipiac poll uh, that he places a great deal of reliability in. And uh, that poll asked the question, uh, do you think uh, the president will keep his uh, promise in this uh, legislation uh, for it not to add uh, to our, our national debt? And according to that poll, 19 percent, only 19 percent of Americans believed that, uh, that that promise would be kept. Even a majority of the Democrats said they didn't think that promise uh, would be kept. So, of course, this is just in keeping with what you said. There's no way in the world that this thing is going to be anything other than another new entitlement uh, program on the backs of an entitlement system that's already crumbling. Well, and really, Fred, the greatest, the, the largest entitlement since the Great Society. And, you know, it's going to hurt the American people because when the president says that if you like your health insurance and you like your doctor, nothing will change. Well, we know the Lewin Group has said that about 119 million people who currently get their health insurance through their employer will probably be moved off into this public option, this government-run insurance plan. And the government is going to, I believe, price their public option if this bill goes through or a version of it with a public option that um, they, the government will price their insurance plan cheaper than the private sector can provide. The mandates and the benefits that a package of insurance will have to have in it is really going to price uh, private insurance out of the market. Private insurance is going to be crowded out, and we are all going to be left in a Canadian-style single-payer Medicare for all system. And we're going to face, just like in Canada, long waiting lists for care, ration care, or denied care. And of course, the elderly people, the senior citizens, will be the first purple people to be hurt by um, denied care. And of course, we won't have access to the latest new drugs, uh, biologics, and medical devices, because the incentive to do the research and development, which all takes place in this country, will be gone. Uh, well, you mentioned uh, you mentioned a uh, sore spot with me. Why, why do you think AARP has uh, has endorsed uh, this this health care proposal? Well, both the AMA, Fred, and AARP have endorsed it. That is, that their leadership 
has endorsed these the the health care reform package. But you know we've seen already a lot of thousands of seniors have already quit AARP, and a lot of docs are quitting the AMA, and young docs aren't joining the American Medical Association. I think the only reason AARP's executive is in, has endorsed the the, the uh, plan is because they have their own insurance plan within AARP, and oh, they see yes. this as a way to you know keep their keep their their operation you know vibrant and and going. And I think I think they really should be talking to their members because the seniors are not going to want to see a four hundred and fifty billion dollar cut in Medicare over ten years and Medicare Advantage, the private option for seniors, which eleven million seniors take advantage of, eliminated because the president wants to eliminate Medicare Advantage. Exactly. Well, it has some choice involved in it, and and uh, you can't afford to have that. Got to get everybody under the same system, uh, as you point out. And and what what is going to be the 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 change in the quality uh, of care and the and the number of doctors uh, to treat uh, not only the people they're treating now, but all these new people. Well, you know, um, I With new new in the sense that they'll have insurance and, of course, use it more. Right. Well, of course. I mean, and that's another way. I mean, how can we reduce the number of uninsured and reduce costs? I mean, it's just absolutely not possible, and several Democrats have said this as well. Um, you know, they want to add about thir between 31 and 36 million of the uninsured uh, to the insured roles. But, you know, Fred, I just think that, th that this cannot... Um, it won't be deficit neutral. And, you know, the Investors Business Daily did a survey of doctors. Forty-five percent of those doctors surveyed said that they would seriously consider giving up the practice of medicine if one of these Obamacare health care plans with a public option comes so, into being. So and, like, and, so and it's absolutely going to happen. It happened so in like, Canada, and it will happen here. Only common sense. Thank you very, very much. Sally Pipes for being with us again.